What is going on, everybody? It's Jets Central coming back with, I guess you could call it the recap video of the Week 5 1 o'clock matchup between the New York Jets at the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to start the video off by just giving credit to Philly. They're the more talented team. They were at home. Uh, the fans came in. They packed the house. They did a tremendous job of providing that Eagles team a great home field advantage. The Jets, or really any team for that matter, if they were to play there this Sunday today, they would have had a tough time. Way better coaching staff as well. Uh, coming off a fantastic win against the Green Bay Packers. We have to give Philly credit. They're the better team um, by a mile. They executed. We did not. They made plays. We did not. They out, they hustled. We did not. They beat us on offense, on defense, on special teams. They outcoached us. They outprepared us, even though we had two weeks to prepare for this game. But I got to be 100% honest with you. I wasn't expecting, and I know this might sound bad, but I was not expecting this Jets team labeled by Vegas as 13.5 point underdogs with no Sam Darnold, right? We didn't have our starting quarterback with a brand new offensive line to go into Philadelphia, a team that I believe is going to be making the playoffs. And Carson Wentz is playing at a fantastic, you know, really, really high level. I was not expecting the Jets to go into Philly and beat them. I know, again, I know it sounds bad. But on this channel, I've always given you guys, um, I've always tried to be clear and provide a lot of clarity about my honest thought process, my mental uh, state and opinions on whatever I'm talking about. I've always been honest, and that was my honest thought. That was my honest belief going into the game. I did not think the Jets were going to win. But yet, I still walk away from the television disappointed. Whether you want to talk about the mortifying offensive line play. Philly's defensive line and linebacking core ate us alive. Whether you want to talk about the quarterback play, that actually speaks for itself. I'm A lot of you guys have school tomorrow. A lot of you guys have work tomorrow. I'm not going to waste your time on Sunday while everybody's decompressing this loss. I'm not going to waste your time ranting on and on and on about how much better the quarterback play should be for the Jets. It should be light years better than it is right now. And yes, it's Luke Falk. It's clear he's not an NFL starting quarterback. He's probably not an NFL backup quarterback. I get that. That point has, you know, really drilled home. I get it, but still, there's no excuse. No excuse why the Jets offense looks like a high school offense. When we have a top five running back in Le'Veon Bell, when we have playmakers like Jamison Crowder on this team, like Robbie Anderson on the team, guys who can stretch the field, guys who can catch it underneath, guys who we can move around the field, right side, left side, behind you, to the right of you, to the left of you, in the slot, whatever you want to do. We ha Time Montgomery is another versatile piece that you can, chess piece that you can kind of just move around the offense and figure out ways to get them the football. No excuse why we can't, why we, we just look horrendous. It's mortifying to watch. It's nightmaric. It's disgusting. It's nauseating. The Bears played with their backup quarterback and looked somewhat decent. The Miami Dolphins, if you want to label Josh Rosen a backup quarterback, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the LA Chargers last week in the first half. That game was tied at halftime. They looked like a competent team. The best game that was played today was the Jacksonville Jaguars, led by their backup rookie sixth-round pick quarterback Gardner Minshew, against... Kyle Allen and the Carolina Panthers, again, another backup quarterback. Another game went to overtime today. The Baltimore Ravens-Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers were down to their third-string quarterback and had a chance in that game. They had a chance in that game. We had two weeks to prepare for the Eagles, and that was what was on display today. Very, very tough pill to swallow, to say the least. I think I speak for a lot of Jets fans when I say I'm frustrated, when I say I'm disappointed, and when I say, I mean, I have i didn't like the Gaze hire. I know a lot of you guys did not like the Gaze hire. I've seen a lot of people kind of on Twitter talking about, oh, we should have hired McCarthy, we should have hired, you know, Matt LaFleur or whoever it is, you know, all these different guys that were, you know, in the running. Um or, you know, guys like Todd Monken and, and, you know, all these different dudes that could have been head coaches and stuff like that. And, yeah, you know, we're only one week into the season. But so far, I, and I've said this in a million videos, I've said this in the last two videos. The Jets, right now, Christopher Johnson, 
was persuaded by Peyton Manning to hire Adam Gase, his buddy, to man the team, to develop Sam Darnold, a guy with an extremely high ceiling, a guy who had absolutely nothing around him his rookie season under Todd Bowles' Jeremy Bates. He had no offensive line. He had no nobody at running back. He didn't have that much talent at wide receiver. But he looked better year one under or with that cast, with that coaching staff, than he does with a top five running back, with a guy that they handpicked from Washington and Jamison Crowder, and most importantly, a guy being paid millions upon millions and millions of dollars to or that's really been labeled throughout his career as the quarterback whisperer, as the quarterback guru, as the offensive mastermind, as the genius, um, to to you know to to come into the to come into Floral Florham Park and to turn this organization around, we have looked worse under Adam Gase's toolage. It just looks as though the players don't like him, and they don't want to play for him, and they're not buying in, and that is why we were getting slaughtered every week. Whether you want to talk about the Bills game where we blew the 16-0 lead against a division rival in MetLife Stadium. How, I mean, like, talk about a bet, leaving a bad taste in fans' mouth, mouths. What a horrible way to lose that game. That was obviously before Darnold was even, you know, had mono. But there were some reports saying that he was dealing with some of the symptoms in preseason, okay? Um, getting bludgeoned by Cleveland, getting killed by... Who was it? The Patriots, and then Week Four, having the two weeks to prepare for the um, you know Eagles, and just looking like we did today. Just it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. My buddy actually texted me saying, "Dude, I don't want to wear my Jets merch anymore. Um, not until we we change it. Or, you know, switch things up here. Get a little creative. Put up some points. Um, at least have some positivity." At least have some positivity. A 25-yard pass. Um, you know, a huge run. A, a kickoff return. A 50-yard field goal. There's questionable t- decisions made throughout the game every week by Adam Gase in this offense. Um, is he handcuffed right now to Luke Falk? He is. Luke Falk, we've already established he's not an NFL quarterback. That's It is what it is. But here's the thing that irritates me, all right? When did Darnold get mono? Midway through week, you know, in between week one and week two. So he misses week two. He misses week three. We don't even have a game week four, so we have an extra week of just chilling, uh, hanging out, trying to prepare for Philly. Then we have week five against the Eagles, and we have not addressed the quarterback position at all. I, I understand that we're down to our third string quarterback here. I get that completely. But here's the thing. By continuing to trot Luke Falk out there and to not dial up anything, anything explosive, anything downfield, anything in attack mode, Adam Gase and to a certain extent Joe Douglas, they're basically saying that Brock Osweiler and Colin, you know, Colin Kaepernick, all of these free agent quarterbacks out there that could be available are worse right now than Luke Falk. Every quarterback out there that could be picked up off of a practice squad, off of waivers, whatever, is worse than Luke Falk. Every quarterback that could be on the trade block is worse than Luke Falk. When Nick, when Nicholas Foles went down for the Jacksonville Jaguars week one, what did the Jaguars do? They elevated Gardner Minshew to the starting quarterback position. Turns out he's looking pretty damn solid for the Jags fans. My buddy UCF Jaguar, I know he's pretty hyped watching the Jaguars in these games. And Minshew, a sixth round rookie pick with not that big of an arm. That's not that tall. That isn't an extreme level athlete. Is going out, completing passes, and looks like a competent offense. But not only did the Jacksonville Jaguars not know that, but they went out and they acquired Josh Dobbs from Pittsburgh. They traded away a late round pick and they got another quarterback in Dobbs to... Back up Gardner Minshew. Just in case Gardner Minshew was, you know, just awful and hard to watch, they can say, okay, let's just, let's put in Dobbs. You know, a guy who, you know, I guess he could still have, you know, have an upside, spent a lot of time under Roethlisberger, has a solid arm, performed, you know, he played in a bunch of games in the SEC, some mobility as well, had some nice preseason uh, performances. They went out and they acted on a sense of, sense of urgency as opposed to just sitting on our hands hoping that Luke Falk looks better. I mean, 
what's holding us back from giving a call to a couple quarterbacks out there? What's holding us back from calling a few teams and saying, hey, would you would you mind trading us your third or second string quarterback for a sixth or fifth round pick? Um, I mean, especially with some of some of the you know ways i mean especially with how some of these players have played the season like guys like leonard williams and trumaine johnson i would be on the phone if i'm joseph douglas calling teams saying hey would you give us anything for trumaine johnson would you give us anything are you interested in leonard williams because obviously he's not interested in playing for us i would be making calls i know there was some talk about adam thielen i know there was some talk about Stefan Diggs. I'm not necessarily saying let's trade for big money guys. AJ Green, what's going on with him? I don't know. Is he going to re-sign in Cincinnati? <sighs> There's so many question marks uh, surrounding that situation. And I've received a lot of DMs and, and you know, people hitting me up and stuff like that saying like, hey, you know, should we, you know, crack a deal with Minnesota to get, land one of these big name wide receivers? Here's the deal on that front. I'm only down for that if I'm trading players. I am not interested in trading picks. The Jets have a number of issues. Okay, you, and I wish there was some silver bullet or you know some elixir that the Jets can just have or do or trade or draft or something, and everything changes. But it's going to be a long process, and it just sucks because this team looks way worse than it ever has before. I think the number one game. Or the, the the I guess the the worst game that I ever watched under the Todd Bowles era was last season actually against the Bills when Matt Barkley came in and lit us up. I feel like it's been like that every week so far. But the only difference is Todd Bowles had nothing on offense. Adam Gase has everybody on well not everybody but has a lot more than Todd Bowles had. Le'Veon Bell is better than anything that Todd Bowles had on offense throughout his career with the Jets. Better than Fitzpatrick. Better than Brandon Marshall. Better than Eric Decker. Better than ASJ, better than Crowell, better than Powell. Um, so I'll leave it there, I guess. We got a lot of work to do. We got Dallas next week. We got the Patriots after that. We got the Ravens at some point this season. We got the Bills some point this season. It's going to be a long year if we don't turn this thing around. But changes have to be made, right? Changes have to be made. I feel like at some point we can't just continue to trot out this team and just get bludgeoned and killed because it's not, it's not only embarrassing for the fans. I mean, the fans, is, you know, they're one thing. Um, you know, me, you, I mean, yeah, like it sucks losing. But imagine being, you know, like one of these guys, like a, like a Nate Harrison at cornerback that's just continued to, to, to be forced out there to get burned and killed and just not be put in a position to have success. Um you know, so hopefully we'll have Darnold back next week. The good news is Chris Herndon will be back, so we will get some depth. Uh, playmaking tight end, so that's always good. That's always a plus. Um, but Dallas is actually playing right now, I believe. So, yeah, I'll leave it there. Jets lose to Philly. Credit them. They did well. Credit their fans. They showed out. And uh, we got a lot of work to do. So, I'll leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.